Yesterday on this system, I was replacing the power supply and I was going to do all the cable management yesterday. And then I stopped and I said, you know what? Before I do that, I want to, I want to do a demonstration, a live demonstration about a question I'm asked quite often, which is how often should you change the thermal compound on your CPU? At what point does it make sense to take the system apart, clean it up, and reapply fresh thermal compound? And it's a very difficult question to answer because there's a lot of variables there as well. The environment the computer's kept in, uh, the thermal compound that was used, and how it was applied, that's going to be a big, big factor. Some companies that are using, uh, you know, that are mass producing computers aren't necessarily going for the highest, uh, the most efficient thermal compound, but rather the one that's the cheapest that'll get the job done. So let's say you build it yourself, you use a real nice high-end thermal compound, then how often should you change it? Well, again, it still has to depend on the environment that it's in. In Arizona, we have a pretty dusty environment and it's very hot and dry, there's no humidity, very little humidity. So a thermal compound is more likely gonna dry out a bit sooner in that kind of environment than in another environment. Elevation can have an effect on the thermal compound as well. So this machine behind me, this is an Alienware Aurora R6, which I believe has the original thermal compound on it. And this machine is several years old. So what I wanna do is I wanna run Prime 95 on it for 15 minutes. And we're gonna measure how hot it gets. Then we're gonna take it apart. We'll take the heat sink off. We'll clean up the thermal compound, reapply it put it back together and run the same test again and see if it makes any difference whatsoever and if it's worth doing. How's that for a test? Here's our clock speeds and everything up right here. And there's our temperatures here. We're seeing a max temperature of 55 degrees centigrade, just under normal operating conditions. Now I'm gonna start Prime 95. Here we go. And start the timer right here. And we're gonna let that run for 15 full minutes, keeping an eye on the temps while we're doing it. We're at 15 minutes and 30 seconds. Ooh, it's really ramped up now. Listen to that. Uh, maybe we'll go 16 minutes on this test now because it's getting interesting. We're looking at a max temp of 85 degrees centigrade. Now, those of you who know me know that 85 is the max that where I start getting concerned. Like, uh, you know, I'd like to be under 85. I'll take 85 if I have to, but if I can improve it, I will. So right there, we just hit 16 minutes on the test. So I'm gonna stop the test. Gotta use the right mouse. Stop. And watch how fast the CPU cools down. It went from 76 all the way down to uh, still dropping 59, 56, 49. So the benefit of an air cooler is you'll see those temps drop quick. The, one of the downsides of a liquid cooler is liquid takes a lot longer to cool down. So your system stays hotter longer after it's done. Not that that's, again, going to make any real difference in the real world, but it just bothers me that nobody talks about it. Full disclosure, that's all I'm saying. All right, let's go ahead and shut this down so we can work on it. Let's do this, start. All right, let's get this heat sink off of here. Now, <clears throat> when I talk about how the improperly the thermal compound is applied. The reason I make that face is it's not so much that it's done improperly on purpose, it's done thoughtlessly. And the result is, is not the same kind of result that you would have if you did it yourself when you were, you know, you took the, you had the pride and took the care and the time to apply. And the amount of time it's going to take you to apply your thermal compound, they will have applied thermal compound to 40 machines. So, you know, when you start taking apart machines, 
Can I tell the one you did versus the one an automated process did? Probably. This is what the thermal compound in an automated process looks like. This is very common. You're like, what thermal compound, right? Look, there's barely any right through the middle here, which is, this is the hottest part right here in the middle. Although on modern CPUs with built-in GPUs, the whole area does get hot. So where's the rest of it? Well, if you look real closely, let's see if I can get you zoomed in on the CPU. You can see that there's no thermal compound along here. Big empty space right here, which probably aligns. I can bring this up. See that little chunk right there? Probably goes in that little hole. You can see it's not really uh, a very good coverage on the CPU. And what is there is there so lightly you can almost see right through it. So what I want to do is wipe all that off. We want to get all the existing thermal compound off of there. And to do so, the first thing I'll do is grab a paper towel and just wipe it. Now what I've got here is some denatured alcohol. You can use rubbing alcohol. You want the highest alcohol content possible. I know like it, at Walmart they sell different strengths of rubbing alcohol. There's like a 70%, uh, a 90%. You want the highest strength. And what you want to do is you want to clean all the old thermal material off the top of the heat spreader here on top of the CPU. You're like, what's the heat spreader? That's the entire top of the CPU. That big metal top is the IHS, or the internal heat spreader. And then do the same thing with the bottom of the heat sink. Now, the thermal compound I'm going to use is really nothing special. But what I've got here is Noctua NTH1. Uh, the reason I buy this is because it's a pretty big tube for the money. There's numerous applications worth of thermal compound in this tube. Now, normally I would lay the computer flat, but I'm going to leave it upright so you can watch what I'm doing. Now, the reason I wear glove, uh, a glove is not because I'm a fan of Michael Jackson, but because I only need the one so that I can use one of the clean fingers of the glove to apply the thermal compound evenly across the entire surface of the CPU. If you just put like a dab in the middle, you don't know if you've got too little on there when you put the heat sink on because you can't see under it. You don't know if you've got full coverage. If you put too much on, you'll know that because it'll ooze out and make a big mess when you put your heat sink on. Some people are worried about air bubbles. That's silly because this is not a system that's being submerged in water. And air bubbles that occur on the thermal compound, um, they move. And there is a solution for that, by the way, if it really bothers you. And it's so basic and simple, you'll probably hit yourself in the head that you didn't think of it. But if you just tap on the thermal compound, watch what it does. You see all the little bumps and ridges it's making? So what that's going to do is that's going to give you the opportunity for that thermal compound to spread out and discourage those bubbles that people make a big deal about. Bubbles, by the way, that actually make no difference whatsoever in your cooling unless you're an extreme overclocker and you care about a third of one degree difference. Now, <clears throat> while I've got it off here, I've made a little bit of a mess, and I can take my Q-tip right now and just kind of clean that up a little. Not that I have to, but again, I take pride in my work. Nobody's ever going to see that because the CPU uh, heatsink is going to cover that whole area up. But just to clean it up a little bit, now I can reapply the heat sink. And let's start running Prime 95. Here we go. Let me start the clock. All right, and we'll just keep an eye on that. We're going to let that run for 16 minutes as we did the last test. Nope, there we go. We're at 85 right there with 12 seconds to go. 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 86, 87. Oh, we're getting hotter. Three, two, one, zero. So there we are, we're at 87 degrees centigrade. We're actually hotter than we were. Now, there are a couple things. First of all, this isn't a problem, okay? We didn't have a problem to fix. 
But if we were trying to make it better, I'm not quite sure we made any difference whatsoever. Um, let me go ahead and stop the test and you can see how fast. Oh, now it's finally cranking up. There it goes. It took a lot longer for that to occur. I'll hit stop on the test. And then you'll see these, these temps over here are gonna drop really quickly. Under normal usage, you would never push the CPU that hard for that long. And that's why it's really not a problem that needed to be addressed. However, I was very uncomfortable with the, the lack of thermal compound on the bottom of that heat sink. And I really thought that just by having better coverage, it would have made a couple degrees difference, up to five degrees difference, but it didn't. It didn't at all. And I wanna emphasize that I believe that is the limitation of the heat sink. And no matter what we do for thermal compound, it just isn't going to make a difference like a bigger, better heat sink and fan would do. But we really can't change it because the limitation of the case doesn't allow that. So there you have it. We replaced the thermal compound. Uh, did it make it any better? I really don't think I made it worse. I think it just those test results will run that way regardless. But uh, even, if, even if we made it worse, which I can't imagine how that's possible, it made a difference of a two degrees. So ultimately all that matters is real world. And in the real world, all I can say is I know that if there's a problem with the computer, it won't have anything to do with the thermal compound. <laughs> that's fresh and replaced. Thanks you guys so much for watching. I will see you all again uh, very, very soon. And until then, bye for now.